Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another round of sound. 25th anniversary of this program, the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown, and we keep cranking them out. And we're happy that you joined us tonight. Bob Pompiani here in the studio. We have a lot to get into. The Steelers draft week. What are they going to do? We'll talk about the Pirates who have lost six in a row after nine and two. They've gone two and nine. But the number one topic tonight on the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown would be the Penguins end of season. And here to debate is our panel tonight. We have Jason Mackey. Columnist with the Post Gazette in the middle. It's Mark Caboli from the Athletic who covers the Pittsburgh Steelers and then Chris Muller from the PM team 93.7 the fan. So we're going to start with the fact that uh, Jason both Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin went back to back years not missing a game and yet regardless they missed the playoffs. Kyle Dubas said they're going to stay the course. Is that the right course to take? No, I wish they would shake things up. Bob. I, I, the definition of insanity, right? You're doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. That being said, what could Kyle Dubas really do? Are you going to trade Tristan Jari? Are you going to trade Eric Carlson? Maybe you pull off one of those two. I'm not sure if you're going to make your team discernibly better. I look at the Penguins. I mean, Sidney Crosby is obviously not the problem. I think Evgeny Malkin, you figured out with Michael Bunting, maybe needed a little bit of different help. I think the Penguins are flawed, but I think it's a difficult situation and what Dubas can actually do. I don't think he can do anything. What are we looking at? Ten guys at no trade clauses, something around there? I mean, unless you're going up there and begging them to be get, going somewhere else, I mean, Dubas, I mean, he's, he's put himself, no, he put himself, he inherited a pretty bad situation. I guess what you can think of, Bob, is Jari, go to him and say, hey, you know, we're trading you, even if it's for a bag of pucks. It didn't sound like you that, get though, did it? I mean, he made it sound like he yes. still doubled down. I want him around. But and Bring up the young goalie. Let him have the shot. Uh, that's the only way you can gain a little bit of money. If not, somebody's going to have to ask to believe, or somebody's going to have to say, hey, okay, I'm ready to go. Move me on. And I don't see it's going to happen Why right would now. they want to leave Club Med where everybody gets a no-movement <laughs> clause, everybody yeah. gets what they want all the time? Um, not to play devil's advocate because – I don't think they're in a great position, and Dubas did inherit some of this. He made some of his own messes. He didn't have to sign Tristan Jari to that deal. He didn't have to kowtow if Mike Sullivan was pushing for it. He didn't have to sign Ryan Graves, who stinks. That's putting it very politely. Uh, so those were two missteps that are his and his alone. Plus the bottom six guys did. I'm well not even going to count Carlson because Carlson wanted to play here. That was like an arranged trade. You or I or Jason or Mark could have like gotten that over the finish line. There was no other team that wanted Eric Carlson, and he wanted to play here. I will say this to be a devil's advocate in one sense. They were a good five-on-five five team this mm -hmm. year. They were objectively good for how old they were. Bunting should make them, you know, better. But if you fix that power play to the point where it's even league average, they're in the but playoffs But, I mean, what right can now. they do? Like, I completely agree. Well, then it's take, take hockey sticks and basically, like, bash these guys about the knees and shins until you start getting it. Yeah, here's, the one, I mean, here's the one thing I'll say. You say, like, you're getting through. You're trying to, like, put square pegs in round holes. The power play was better when Michael Bunting came. They put him I in a little bumpery agreed. position. Agreed. Figure out a way to make that guy, believe it or not, one of the centerpieces of your power play. I mean, it's maybe, the way it was when Hornquist was here. It was a different style thought, of doing that, but you it. need that element. I thought with uh, Carter being here, he was hardly used. Put him on the power play. I mean, you know, same kind of role. I mean, he's a big dude, good yeah. man still, regardless. Uh, but that didn't happen. Now I want to get into something else, and that would be Mike Sullivan himself. We'll start with you, Chris, on this one. Uh, Mike Sullivan would is signed he's going to be here there were no indications that he wouldn't be here but let's say at the start of next season things don't go so well uh, how hot of a seat should he be on given the fact this would be three years in a row if they're teetering on missing a playoffs blue tarski 0, 0 double secret probation for mike sullivan that's what i would do i'm serious uh I think that if you're going to bring them back, and they obviously are, because, again, this is Club Med where everybody's preconceived opinion of you is all that matters, and obviously Fenway Sports Group loves him. He's got till Christmas. His power play better look better. Todd Reardon, goodbye. He's going to be gone soon. Power play better look better. Team better look better. Team better look different. And if they don't and the record doesn't reflect it, happy trails, man. I don't even know if you give them till Christmas, honestly, Chris. I mean, pick, you know, a, pick a nice holiday where yeah, we eat lots of food. It was what, beginning of December, they got rid of Mike Johnston and went, went with Mike Sullivan. I want to say it was like December 15th. Yeah, it was December 15th. 15th. Yeah. It was yeah, early, I mean, early. It, I would, I was, it, it was prior to Christmas, but after Thanksgiving. And I could argue Jim Rutherford waited too long to make that move. That team was lethargic. There was nothing there. And, I mean, if that's the way the Penguins come out of the gate, I, I, I think the world of Mike Sullivan, but – you can't keep doing that. At that point, you have to flip the switch. I don't care what the contract says. I don't like putting a date on it, Thanksgiving, Christmas. 
I think you have to see how they're playing. I think if they're playing decent, you have to keep it there. I'm not saying you have to be 500 or whatever by Christmas or by uh, – Thanksgiving to keep his job here. I think he's earned the right to last a little bit longer that and try to work through. But I mean, has he earned the, the right though? Yes. Because this is the team where they switch coaches mid-season and they win Stanley Cups. Two of the last three cups they've won are because they jettisoned a coach. Like, well, Mike Jones. We were talking about this now. before we came in tonight. Unforgiven, one of the great lines in movie history. Does he deserve more time? Has he earned the right? Deserves got nothing to do with it. I mean that. Like, well, he, well, deserves, I, I think they, he deserves the benefit of the doubt. But we're on like year well, six of benefit yeah, of the doubt. How much, bene- run how much benefit of the doubt is there here? He guys like a cat with nine lives. It's, it's the a last, lot. The last playoff series they won was in 2018. I was barely oh, really? married. I didn't have kids yet. Like, yeah, right, it's hair. been a long. Uh, I still have hair, Mark. Let's not get huh? too personal here. Hey, I would be shocked if Reardon stays either. I think they'll make changes too. There, I, I, the, I think they're just going to stay. Honestly, no, I, I think they have. That, to that would be change. that would be lunacy it's if not they were to come keep from him. Sullivan. That's his guy, man. It ain't going to come from him. It's going to come from somebody something. above that. Yeah, something they have has to, to change. change. Something. Yeah, and they're going to change. Tell some if players. it's his guy, just like trick Mike and tell him like we sent Todd to a nice farm well, upstate. What do you want Reardon to do? <laughs> be honest with you. I mean, he also you, works you, with the defensemen, and by the way, they wouldn't potentially be in this predicament if Eric Carlson, a Norris Trophy winner, hadn't made two of the dumbest defensive mistakes okay. I've ever seen that's in the game. We're talking that's about part of Eric Carlson, though. But I know, but but Todd Reardon, for as good as like St. Ivany and Ryan Shea were. It's also Todd Reardon's job to get the best out of the best guys. Yeah, but you also have guys who have in their DNA yes. this this unflinching ability but, to still pinch when they're not supposed okay, to. Okay, but that gets back that, to the whole DNA thing I understand thing that. This How is much is that bed. on coaches versus players? And what do you do? Well, you make your bed what do when you do, do with this. Them? Don't, Jason, you don't take you. Well, playing, you play playing time okay, away from okay, them? Okay, okay. Ice time gone? What did they do 15, 16, 17 when they're winning cups? They're holding players accountable. Hit, hit them with the ice time. Okay. If you're not doing what you're supposed to do, if you're pinching – who are the Scott Wilsons, though, and Kunockles and guys well, from that era? Okay, that's the pro- then that's another Here, discussion. Let me get Chris, to another quick to problem. They need to replenish more of that depth, with, which Would, I think Dubas started they, they, doing. They started to do it at yes. the end of the year. When guys got hurt, right? Like I agree, the right with, I agree got hurt. with you turning things over to a younger crowd. No problem. Here's there. the problem. Does Mike Sullivan trust any of them? Because in 15, 16 especially, they were all Mike's guys from Wilkes-Barre, right. yeah. so he trusted that's a, them. That's a separate discussion. Well, I think he got a taste of what fair. some of these guys have now, and he should trust them moving. He has to at this point. We're going to. Take a break on that note, uh, and we're going to switch over to the Steelers eventually. We'll get into the draft, but also the Pirates have gone into a swoon here now, and the question is, how long do they stay with some of these guys before they send some down to the minors? Who might that be? We'll talk about it right here on the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. All right, welcome back. We're talking about the Steelers shortly. In the meantime, the Pirates started 9-2, and two, a little tantalizing, and now they've gone 2-9, and nine, and there are all sorts of problems. Mark Caballi, this whole thing started when Jarrett Jones, pitching well, really terrifically all year, was taken out of a game after 59 pitches for no apparent reason. Ben Charrington pretty much said that wasn't his call. It was the coaching staff's decision. Why did they do it? Was it the wrong move at the wrong time? Well, obviously it was the wrong move because they lost. I think... You know, I think Sheltie is in love with that bullpen a little bit more than he probably should be right now. And that's probably where he was right at that point. You know, get, get him through five innings. Let's bring in our bullpen and uh, let's close it out right here. But 59 pitches here and, and how well he was throwing. Even if he did have a, a blow-up inning, a 30-pitch inning, he's still within the range of, you know, the 80s or something. And you're allowed to go out there and get the guy as well. I think if you put him on the hot seat and make him tell the truth, Hindsight's 2020. He would admit that he was wrong on that. It was yeah, not a good call. I, I didn't like it, Bob. I understand what they're trying to do with Jared Jones and his arm. Obviously, he means a great deal to the franchise. So does Paul Skeens. But I, come on, score in situation. The guy's having this historically efficient start: 59 pitches, 50 strikes, no walks, seven strikeouts, that one hit allowed. Thing, right? Let him keep going. And then you let him keep going one or two innings. Maybe you get it to the bullpen, get it across the finish line or whatever. After the game, here comes Shelty and says, you know what? We were going to shorten that start, but we didn't. We want to win the game. That's important to us. I also have to worry about this kid's arm. So we're going to have to pay just so everybody understands. But, you know, it's okay to do both. You can prioritize winning and the kid's arm. Yeah. Do you want to hear from the devil on this shoulder or the little angel on this I shoulder? We'll start with the devil because this is a good showdown show. Okay. <laughs> well, this will be like <laughs> my multiple personalities debating. The devil says Ben Charrington can say it was coaching related. I just, I don't have to believe that. Uh, and I actually say I don't believe it, thinking that they are trying to do the smart thing with these young arms. They are. Like, I don't even say that with malice or with anger towards them. I get what they're trying to do, throttling him maybe every fourth or fifth start. 
the angel now, so that's the devil. The devil is very uh, persuasive, I think. The angel would say this, Jared Jones in an insanely small sample size, third time through the batting order, which would have been second time through for the first two hitters of the sixth, and then third time through starting with the third hitter. He's given up like an 860 OPS against, like teams figured him out late in games. This guy I don't believe, though. I think they were going to take him out the whole time. Yeah. And well, I just think that, like, saying, oh, his third time through or whatever, we love our bullpen, I think that's an excuse. And I don't even think they should feel bad about it because I get it. The guy throws pretty much max effort all the time. He's not a huge dude. We see all these arm injuries. I don't have a problem with it. I just wish they'd say, we're doing this. Yes, we know it frustrates people. It might even frustrate guys on that team. It probably does. But that's what we're doing. Well, that just strikes me with 50 pitches or 59 and 50 for strikes. That just doesn't seem the time to do it. It was just too easy for him. All right, let's talk about who should be sent down, Jason, because it looks to Everybody. me like there are, there are guys. <laughs> All right, moving on. Next topic. Thank you. There are guys who legitimately should benefit from this. Yeah. And I'll start with Henry Davis. I also want to include O'Neill Cruz in this, who's really struggling. Uh, struggling. He's, he's the worst man in baseball when it comes to striking out. Uh, but Henry Davis hasn't done all that well. You have Grandal, who's coming back. He's through a rehab. What should happen with Henry Davis? Yeah, I mean, it's a tough situation right now. They're going to bring Yasmani Grandal back when he's ready. He makes $2.5 million. The Pirates are obviously going to have him on the Major League roster. They're, they're paying him. Right now, you're looking at Joey Bart or Henry Davis. Or both, but they've said previously they're not going to carry three catchers. So at this point, I mean, I feel bad for Henry Davis, but he hasn't produced, uh, produced enough to stay on the roster. The other guy's been better. Henry's not hitting his weight right now. Defensively, it's been better than it was before, but at that, you know, I'm probably sticking with Barton. I'm not sending Cruz down. I've gotten some really weird, irrational, upset people saying to like but DFA need, him or doesn't you know, he need well, something though? DFA. They, they, they I, talk about multiple. They I've gotten talk, multiple DFA O'Neill Cruz's. It's it's yeah, but really they've talked about incredible. playing him. I'm surprised those through people this. can use a computer. How, how to much send can email. you play him if he continues to do what he's doing? He's in a funk. He needs yeah, some help. I mean, th- Yes. Kick him down in the batting order, then, if you really want to do that. Today they was did. eighth, I think. But, I mean, steadily, steadily kick him down in the batting order. But, I mean, I did see with him, they're talking on the postgame show about how that he worked that walk. And I want to say it was Stephen Brault said, I wouldn't want to see him if I were a pitcher, knowing that he's starting to see the ball like that. I politely disagree. I would want to see him right now. Uh, Henry Davis is the one you got to send down, though, because you have Grandall. Also, Henry Davis right now is so out of sorts. He's doing what I'd like to believe I would do if you thrust me into a major league game at the plate. I would go up there and swing as hard as I could. Even though if I was missing 94-mile-an-hour fastballs by three feet, I'd look like I was swinging hard and trying hard. But that's, what it, that's the net effect. <laughs> Yeah. Tell me, tell me that's not almost more troubling. Cruz, you it's, might say like he's just being too patient. Davis is giving it everything he's got on every swing mark, and he's not even coming close. No, he's, he's pressing. That's what well, he's doing. Back to Cruz real quick. I mean, first of all, he's got to swing at some strikes. That's number one. I mean, he's swinging. He's got Joey Votto. He's got Joey Votto disease, and he's I mean, not Joey Votto. He's on pace to obliterate the major league record in strikeouts, and that's that's just not good right now. So, obviously, something has to be done there. Not, but nobody's going to like what I'm going to say here. Henry Davis, I mean, take him out from behind the plate, put him at DH, because you know what? That DH isn't playing very well. No, he's he, not. They, they need to wean nobody him off this point. more and more every You're talking about Andrew McCutcheon. Yes, just, I mean, McCutcheon's bet 170. He's just, he, I don't know if it's not he's healthy or whatever. I know how much he means. 170 for 134 or whatever it is. <laughs> but, I, but, but, you know, you know how it is when you're catching a lot of times – Catchers bat 220 because there's other things on their man mind. I would give him the opportunity to be the DH. Man, I'm they got to wean him down, man. He just doesn't have it right now. I'm not sitting Kutch for a guy hitting 179. Well, once, <laughs> once whatever few, it is. Well, like, future, one guy's 23 and one, one guy's 37. And once the future, one isn't. So, anyway, we got to go to a break. The Pirates have the Brewers coming into town for four, and the Brewers are just First beating three. up everyone in the division right now. When we come back. It's draft week. Who will the Steelers take with the 20th overall pick? We'll get into it next right here on the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. Very interesting offseason for the Steelers so far. They have the draft this week. They'll choose 20 overall, 51 in the second round. Mark Bali, who will they take? What, give me a position. You don't necessarily have to have a name for me, but give me a position that is number one on your list. Offensive tackle, right tackle. I think that's the way they go. The, the draft sets up where there's going to be people left in that position right there the question is are they going to move up to be able to find a guy they really really like uh, but I think everything points towards tackle right now I mean you can slide him in. You, you, I mean even the Mims 
thing, Chris. Um, mm -hmm. You're looking at a guy that, okay, he only has eight stars. Okay, you don't have to start am him I right that away. Is, that, am I that branded yeah. as the Mims guy well, that you turned well, to me? Yeah. That's fine. I'm, That's fine. The, I'll wear that. You're the anti-Dan Moore guy. So you can wean <laughs> him off of there. I don't think I'm the only one, brother. <laughs> I don't think Dan Moore is as bad as the PFF says he is. So I go offensive tackle. Absolutely. Uh, I go tackle as well. I mean, Barton seems to be rising from Duke, but he is strictly a center. Otherwise, people would play him at left tackle. They need a center. I'm all about so I'm all about a couple of things: filling needs, but also understanding positional value. So here are the positions that matter: quarterback, if you don't have one, edge rusher, tackle, corner, and wideout. Those are like the big five anymore. With the wage. Well, not for yeah. the Steelers. Not for the, I'm saying You're generally. Saying generally. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank globally you, globally. Speaking. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Obviously, yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, I go Amarius Mims, and here's why. Don't draft scared. Like, if Latham's not there, and I think Latham might be their preference, or Fuaga, one of those guys, if they're gone and you don't want to trade up enough, don't draft scared. Pick the guy who's got 800 snaps, who, if he reaches his potential, is going to be an all-pro level guy because yeah. he's huge and moves. That's what I would do. Jason, would right. it surprise you if they went wide receiver in the first round? It would surprise me. Okay. And I, I'm, I'm mostly with Mark on drafting offensive line. I'm a little bit swayed by the center situation. And I think about if there's a trade down scenario, if they can address other, like if, if you could get something decent to trade down and maybe get a Zach Frazier or something like that. At the end of the day, I don't really disagree with these guys. I mean, if, if Barton becomes the pick, I like his versatility. I like what he offers. That's fine. I'd be good with Mims, too. As long as it's offensive line, fine. But if there's a trade down scenario, I would also be okay with that. If there's a trade down, you better be darn well sure that the guy you want's there. Right. Yep. That's what I'm saying. That's, but if you, you have, have a cut, like if you have Powers, Johnson, Frazier, both there, yeah. and you can slide down a couple places. Ten seconds or less for everybody. I'll do this one, Bob. Quinion Mitchell or Byron Murphy are there at 20. Do you take either one over a tackle? No. 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 Well, that wasn't my best question. <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> we'll take a break. There's another interesting dynamic, and a lot of people said this is not going to happen, but it might. Brandon Ayuk. If, if it were possible to make a trade for him, what would it take to get him, and how much would you pay him? That's next. As I said, this is the 25th anniversary of our program here, number one Cochran Sports Showdown. During that time, we've seen a lot, like tomorrow would be two years ago that the Penguins – qualify for the playoffs for the 16th consecutive season. That was the longest at the time, and now it's over, and it's over <laughs> by two, and they have two years of no playoffs. So um, we'll see if that can change next year, as we talked about earlier. Now let's get into, Mark, I want to talk about Brandon Ayuk. I know this has been brought up, and the agent said no, there's no trade. But let's say hypothetically the Steelers really wanted this guy, and San Francisco would be willing to talk. Number one, what would it cost in terms of draft equity, but also salary, and would they be in a position to even give it to him? Well, I, I don't think it really matters what they would have to give up. If it's a first rounder, so be it. If it's a second rounder, that's better off. I don't think that's a big key. It's on the back side of that. You have to sign this guy to uh, He's only 25, deal. so that yes. makes sense. It's you sort of like Patrick Queen. 28 but, to 30 but million. Are you, right, paying, you paying this guy three for 90, three for 87? Only way that happens is if you're not sold on George Pickens coming back in a year or next year extending him. If not, you're not spending 30 million on George Pickens, 30 million on dollars on Brandon Ayuk. You, you still got a quarterback to pay next year at some point, right? I mean, so uh, I think that's the key. I nope. think the back end of it, the, the contract, I don't think acquiring him would be a big deal. I think paying him yeah, and sure, being it's the money. Of, yes. All right, now you got, you got to say you guys are going to get mad at me for this, and then you talked about McCutcheon. You're going to get mad at me for this, everybody. I loved what they did with their quarterback room. I have a very hard time paying a wide receiver $30 million like that because I'm not so sold that they're going to get like awesome quarterback play to sort of make that worthwhile. I know you could argue Jalen Hurts got put over the hump by A.J. Brown, and he did. Mm -hmm. But I also that's a young guy, too. Fields would have to be the starter from almost day one for me to feel better about it, and I still don't want to do it mm -hmm. for the record. I don't, I don't think you're the bad guy with that, Chris. I mostly agree with you. I, I agree with Mark, too, with you know giving up what you, whatever you would have to give up in the draft. I don't want to pay a receiver $30 million to compliment George Pickens, theoretically, especially in a wide receiver-heavy draft. Would you I pay would love Pickens $30 them. million eventually if it came to that? I'd want to see more. I, I wouldn't be against it. I'd pay one of them. If, if Pickens becomes what I think he can become, yes, I would pay him I think I million. already there, though. But, yeah. It's more certainty. I don't, you at know. this moment, like if the question is right this second, Bob, no, I would not pay him $30 million. But I... More sample, uh, you know, Russell Wilson as his quarterback and not, Ke not Kenny Pickett or maybe even Justin Fields potentially. I'd like to see if they can get somebody in the draft All this right. year. This one requires very short answers. Chris, start with you. Who will be the opening day quarterback and who will be the quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers at the end of the year? No. Oh, oh wait a minute. <laughs> you want it longer than that. Uh, Russell Wilson, 
and Russell Wilson. Bold choice. Okay. I totally agree. I don't think Russell Wilson has a shot in H-E double whatever of losing this job at all. And Nothing. Unless he gets hurt. Wait, I want to change my answer after hearing Mark now. No, I'm just kidding, Mark. I was busting your <laughs> Wilson and Wilson. I don't know if I'm So you're giving no shot at No. Oh, no, I, wait, I, I wait, think wait, Russell wait. Will Russell Wilson's retweeting off his stuff, so he, 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 <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know if we can believe I would believe quickly him. say I think Fields has a real chance, but that would require Wilson playing poorly enough, and I have an odd feeling Wilson's going to look pretty good. Yeah, well, I would think so, too, but I Pro Bowl. think strange <laughs> things have happened. any worse than last year's guy, I, right? It, listen, if I had told you that Kenny Pickett wouldn't be here after two years, you wouldn't have believed it, and most people wouldn't have. Strange things happen uh, when it comes to quarterbacks. Meanwhile, Nothing strange here. To earn a great nickname, you got to do things bigger and better. And that describes all four number one Cochrane Ford stores. They're called the Ford Tastic Four because customers can enjoy four times the pricing power, four times the selection, four times the thrills. Plus, get limited time offers right now. The Ford Tastic Four have it all for you. So visit any one of the four number one Cochrane Ford stores or shop online at Cochrane.com. We'll be right back. It's been fun. We are done. Remember, by this time next week, we will know exactly what the Steelers did in their draft. We'll talk all about it. Our thanks to Chris Muller, Mark Caboli, and Jason Mackey tonight for being with us. We thank you for watching 25th anniversary season of the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. Have a great night. We'll see you again next Sunday night. Mark it down, 1135 KDKA.